The Peter Schiff Show. Uh, next up is Gary calling, calling from uh, Chevy Chase, Maryland. Gary, welcome to the show. Hi, Peter. Thank you for your show. Um, I love it. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for listening and calling in. Thank you. Um, here's my question. Um, you, you've uh, expressed some views of taking a strict constructionist view of the Constitution, specifically the Commerce Clause and, and the power to coin money. Yeah, I mean, I, I think just, the Constitution means what it says. It means what the intent of the framers were. It's not open for interpretation to be redefined depending on who happens to be on, on the bench. Yeah, I've been thinking about that, and I, I've been analogizing, and I don't know if this is a correct analogy, but analogizing the, the Constitution to the Bible, for instance. And, and my, my observation of religious people is that very few religious people uh, actually take a strict constructionist view of the Bible. Most of the people I know take a cafeteria-style approach to following the Bible. Um, my, I, I mean, if Christians and Jews had to be forced to comply with, say, I don't know, Leviticus, where they have all those commandments, I don't, I don't, I don't see very many people that I know. Yeah, really well, there's that. certainly a big difference between individuals deciding to follow the Bible either strictly or the way they want to follow it. There's a big difference between that and the government. See, the government is required. Uh, to abide by the law and abide by the Constitution. I mean, I'm a Jew. I, I mean, I, I can practice Judaism any way I want. And, uh, you know, I'm not required by law. I mean, same thing with, you know, you know, a, a Christians or Catholics. I mean, yeah, I mean, they do. The, the, the Pope can set the tone for Catholicism, but they're not going to drum you out of the religion. And you're not, re you know, if you don't do everything the Pope says and, and you're not required. But that's a big difference. The government has to abide by the law. You know, it's not that's not up to interpretation. But anyway, I don't know if you want to continue with that, but we got a commercial break, uh, so don't go away. Welcome back, everybody. It's Peter Schiff here at SchiffRadio.com. And uh, is my caller still on who was talking about the Constitution? I, I'm still here. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, the laws, you know, all the laws that are written that restrict private behavior, they're not up to interpretation. They're, they're crystal clear. You know exactly what's illegal. In fact, if they were ambiguous, they would be void for vagueness. You know, uh, everybody knows the saying, ignorance is no excuse, of the, for, no excuse for breaking the law. But if the law itself is unclear and you're not sure what the requirements are, that is an excuse. And so it's very funny how the government says all the laws that are written to, re to limit private behavior, they're clear. But for some reason, the laws that are written to limit government behavior and government power, they're just open for interpretation. I mean, that's ridiculous. The Constitution is clear. Its meaning is clear. The problem is our judges don't like the meaning of the Constitution. They want a different country. See, the Constitution was written so that we would have freedom, so that we, we would have capitalism and a very limited government. But most of the judges on the bench, they don't want that. They have some, you know, socialist utopian dream. They want the government to be powerful. They want the government to do all these good things for people. And the Constitution stands in its way, so they ignore it, and, and they do it by calling it an interpretation so that they can let the government do what they think is right. But it's obviously not what the Founding Fathers envisioned. Well, I, I just uh, – my only uh, other just observation is that, for instance, the, the, the power to coin money, um, that, that power, uh, clearly the government has gone beyond that power. But nothing has happened to them because they've gone beyond that power. Well, because the courts they, have ignored it. They, 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 they basically say coin money means they can print paper money. Well, how, how, do, how, do you, how do you get that from coin money? And especially when the Constitution defines money as gold or silver, because it says no state shall make anything but gold and silver legal tender for payments of debt. So it defines it. Now, people will say, well, that says no state. It doesn't say the federal government can't do it. But that's not how the Constitution was written. The Constitution was written. It denies powers to the states and grants them to the federal government. So if there's nothing in the Constitution that says that Congress can make something other than gold and silver legal tender, in fact, Congress was giving no authority to make anything legal tender. It was simply given the authority to coin money. And then so what is money? The only thing, the only time 
money is mentioned in the Constitution is at when, it, when it's talking about the states, where it says that legal, legal tender, the only thing that can be legal tender, which is money, is gold and silver. So it's, it's obvious. What, does it, what did they do? They said that Congress can take that gold and silver and put it, make a coin out of it because it's the only thing that the states can use as money by the Constitution. So, I mean, it's, it, nothing could be more clearer than that. Uh, yet somehow, you know, uh, we've got this system. Now, they might say that, see, Congress isn't doing it. They say it's the Federal Reserve. Say, so, oh, the, the, the government's not making, not printing paper money. The Federal Reserve is doing it. I mean, that's one of the reasons that they have the Fed, because it would have been illegal for Congress to do what the Fed is doing. But if nothing is going to happen to the government for going beyond its powers with the ability to coin money, then... Uh, it, it, I mean, the, the Constitution ends up, I think, being perceived by some people that it's a living, breathing document that can be changed, and you can sort of take a cafeteria-style approach to to one thing or another. I mean, yeah, I know that's the opinion, but a living, breathing document that can be changed is the same thing as no document at all. I mean, why even have a Constitution if it means whatever people want it to mean? I mean, you know, we, you know, then what's the point? You know, the whole idea of writing it down is so that that's what it is. So it doesn't change. So it's constant. So it's there. You know, if it just, you know, if, if it if it changes with, with, you know, with the times, then again, it's like having nothing at all, which is basically, uh, you know, what it amounts to. OK, I, I mean, I, I see what you're saying. I, I just um, when I was thinking about the Bible and thinking about how many commandments are in the Bible that I don't perceive most people would be willing to comply with today. Well, and see, the difference is they pick and choose. Yeah, the difference is nobody is required to. Uh, the Bible is not law in the sense that you know, if I don't uphold uh, the Bible, I can't be put in jail. I mean, you know, people might think that maybe their, the punishment is going to be rendered in the afterlife or something like that, but not here on Earth. Uh, so it's not up to the government to punish you for violating the Bible. It it would be up to up to God, and but so it's a very different story between actual laws that we enforce here on Earth, and a law can't be open to interpretation. A law has to be clear. It has to clearly define uh, what the law means so that you can abide by it. And the government is not abiding by the Constitution. They're ignoring the Constitution. And the courts let them get away with it. I mean, it never would have been ratified if uh, the founders had said, you know, hey, you know, we have no idea what this Constitution means. I mean, we, we, this is what it means today, but you know, it could change tomorrow, next week, next month. It all depends on how people want to interpret it. I mean, they would have laughed them out. I mean, they would have got, we would have gotten right back. You know, there's no way we would have had a Constitution if they, if they, tried, if they tried to explain that that's how it was. Uh, anyway, thanks, thanks for your call, Gary. Um, the Peter Schiff Show. Who is it responsible for making sure that the government obeys the Constitution? And that is the Supreme Court. And that is the, the, the appellate courts, the judicial system. And that is the institution of all the institutions of government that has failed the American public the most. I would say it is the judges. And ironically, the judges probably have more respect if you probably asked you know for opinion polls of you know how do you regard uh, politicians or how do you regard congress versus supreme court justices i'm sure there's you know the public is uh, much more receptive of the supreme court they probably see them in a much uh, more favorable light and they shouldn't these this it is a very very dangerous destructive group of individuals who have occupied uh, that court over the years and and the lower courts and they have really failed in in in, in providing the checks and balances that our framers uh, had um, had hoped and had had expected the judicial branch to exercise and i think that is the real problem we really should have an occupy uh, the Supreme Court movement going on, uh, that would be uh, a, a very appropriate and maybe, who knows, a very effective place uh, for people to protest.